All right, let's get a few things sorted out. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things that non-gamers get wrong about real gamers. For this list, we're looking at what we consider to be the biggest misconceptions surrounding video games and the gaming culture by misinformed or ignorant non-gamers. To be clear, we're focusing on the misconceptions surrounding the hobby of gaming itself, rather than video games in general. First, I'm going to go over my reasons why I think most gamers are single, and then I'm going to branch off into tips. Number 10. Gamers are all great with electronics. And uh, the sound card doesn't even work in this one. Actually, I mean, I even have one. I just looked. What? For some reason, gamers are typically viewed as being extremely electronic savvy individuals, despite many not having the faintest idea how their console or PC works. Perhaps it comes from the electronics-based form of the hobby itself, but whatever the case, gamers are frequently asked by elderly family members, friends, and relatives to take a look at their computer or see what's going on with their internet. I know. Oh. Come on, even building a PC is far easier and less complex than many people think. Just because we can play a PlayStation doesn't mean we know how it works, though. And unlike what the Super Mario Brothers movie implies, we certainly cannot hack a police computer. I can't believe you can do that. Because we're sitting on my butt all day playing video games, that's why. Number 9. Video games make you stupid. How can you not make fun of that? One of the biggest urban legends surrounding video games is that they promote stupidity, particularly in children. Critics argue that gaming is a monotonous, stationary hobby, and that gaming can detract from more stereotypically intelligent pastimes like reading. And the fact that all these esports nerds are upset with me, I'm hitting a very, very sensitive spot. While there are certainly health detriments to 15 hour gaming binges, gaming is perfectly fine in moderation. In fact, author Gabe Zickerman theorizes that video games are actually making us smarter. Fluid intelligence, a measurement in IQ tests, has been on a steady rise since the early 90s, and Zickerman attributes this incline to various components of playing video games, including overcoming obstacles and creative thinking. And a simple definition of gamification is it's the process of using game thinking and game mechanics to engage audiences and solve problems. Number 8. Gamers are single. They could potentially improve your chances at getting the ladies, spending way too much time game. A quick glance around the internet will tell you how people view the stereotypical gamer, single, alone, and in their parents' basement. Perhaps it's due to the hobby's more personal reclusive nature, but many people see gamers as the stay indoors single type. While there is little data to back this up, it's pretty safe to say that this is a really broad and wide generalization of gamers as a whole. I haven't known you since we were kids, but wow, you. Married, huh? This is just kind of one of those misconceptions that you can solve with mere anecdotal evidence. I'm sure you know plenty of gamers with girl and or boyfriends, let alone husbands and wives. Why would you go into the fire, just you idiot? Just go into the fire! See if it should, hopefully it brings you back to where I am. Number seven, gamers are immature. No! That was my kill! Playing video games online certainly doesn't help this stereotype, what with children, screaming, crying, racist comments, verbal abuse, your mother jokes, and all manner of other trolling. Get ass daughter, you goddamn it, retard! Even social media sites like Twitter aren't safe from the bombardment of childish behavior, like when game developers will get death threats for delaying their games. Unfortunately for gamers, this very loud vocal minority gives the hobby and its followers a bad name. Please shut your f up now! SHUT UP! Many games are filled with great and silent people, many of whom are more than happy to help you have a conversation, help you hone your craft, or provide a sportsmanlike challenge. You just have to find the right people and mute and ignore the dumb ones. No! Stop! I'm not playing! You keep killing me! Number 6. You can't make a career out of video games? Oh! Jesus! While many non-gamers see gaming as a pointless and dead-end hobby, the truth is that there's a wide range of individuals that make a very comfortable living playing video games. There are gaming journalists who play and review games for a living, either through a website publication, as a freelancer, or with their own YouTube audience. There are also Twitch streamers and YouTube players, such as PewDiePie, who earned roughly 7.5 million in 2015 alone. You like it? You like Smurf juice? There are entire companies devoted to making entertaining content based around video games. <laughs> And many e-athletes are now making millions of dollars through gaming tournaments. And that is not even mentioning the hundreds of thousands of developers, programmers, and artists that work tirelessly to bring these games to life. Number 5. Video games aren't a respectable artistic medium. I ask a question that's been circulating the past few years. 
Are video games art? While views regarding this stance are slowly shifting with the increasing popularity of video games, there is still a lingering view amongst non-gamers that video games are not art. However, this goes against the very nature and subjectivity of art itself. What some may see as pointless or time-wasting, others see as artistic beauty. Even speaking in a conventional sense, many video games are becoming increasingly artistic. Indie games like Journey and Braid have been praised for their artistic merits, and even mainstream games like Bioshock have plenty of artistic value. Like in any entertainment medium, there is art to be found within. Number 4. Gaming makes you a socially awkward nerd. Uh, I'm using real guns, love that. Uh, Gears of War, of course. Another one of my favorites. As previously mentioned, gaming still has a personal stigma attached to it in that many non-gamers see players as nerdy, reclusive, and awkward people with no friends. However, this simply isn't true. As with most hobbies, there is a wide range and diversity amongst its followers. Sure, some may be socially awkward, but that is in no way representative of the hobby as a whole. Uh, I've turned in a sec. Okay, okay. I'm the MP the hell, guys. Many famous people who are generally not considered nerdy, like Vin Diesel, Snoop Dogg, and the late Robin Williams, have advocated their love of gaming. Also, with the increased popularity of casual gaming, such as the Wii and mobile releases, it's very evident that gaming is for everyone, not just the socially awkward. Number three, all gamers are male. It's the Horde versus the Alliance. Is that what they're doing? Yeah. What, in the first, like without the expansions, like they're just going with Stormwind and just, that's it? Oh, I think so. Video gaming is seen as an extremely male-dominated hobby and profession. Many game journalists are male, and many popular video games, like Call of Duty, are marketed more towards males than females. However, via a study conducted by the Pew Research Center, it was discovered that gaming is a pastime almost virtually split right down the middle in terms of gender. They found that 50% of men and 48% of women participated in the playing of video games on a console, PC, or mobile device. Oh, they are Team Deal Girls Hong Kong Biology Pair. However, it should be said that while it's ignorant to proclaim that video games are played solely by men, it was found that males identify themselves as gamers far more than women, which we concede possibly lends some credence to the myth. <laughs> Number two, video games make you violent! It's a different personality you, type. You, oh, right, 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 right. It's all those video games. It's a good thing in Japan they don't play any video games. One of the most widely discussed and controversial topics surrounding video games is their link between violent content and violent behavior. People like the now disbarred lawyer Jack Thompson have advocated against violent video games, and games have previously been blamed for various mass shootings in the United States. But you get in this digital world, this fantasy world, that I think you take a look at the right. folks at Columbine, Aurora, etc. The Pew Research Center found that as many as 40% of Americans still believe in this myth, despite years of credible research debunking it, including a study conducted by Oxford University. While it's understandable that an older generation would believe and buy into a correlation, as they grew up without this form of entertainment, the years of study suggest that the myth is simply not true. I mean, my, my two boys punch and kick each other all the time. They've never played video games, so, you know, there you have it. Number one, gaming is for children. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest misconception still circling around the general population is that gaming is meant for kids, as adults are supposed to take on more mature hobbies. But just as gamers have matured, so have the games. Research performed by the Entertainment Software Association revealed that the average gamer is 48 years old. What is perhaps the most revealing is the fact that more gamers are over the age of 36 than between the ages of 18 and 35. It's clear that video games are not only transcending gender, but age as well, as more adults are playing video games than ever before, as they grew up with the medium. While it may appear to non-gamers that teenagers dominate the market, it's clear that the gaming medium is full of adults. Do you agree with our list? What negative stereotypes do you find yourself saddled with? The best way to understand the evolution of the craft is by comparing it to another craft that many people argued for years was not art, movies. For more open-minded top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And if the power of gamification allows us to unleash their collective ability, we'll all win. Thank you.